Hi, welcome to another episode of Manage with Dr. B. So, today we're going to be working on foundation bases on history taking. Now, I'm going to walk you through key steps when it comes to taking and effecting history. Now, we're going to look at four categories majorly, which entails a very structured history. Now, before we even go down that lane, there are important factors you need to look into before you take an effective history. Like, you ask an open-ended question, not closing a question. For example, what's your name is different from, your name should be Jack. Your name should be Jack is a closed-ended question, but what's your name is an open-ended question. Now, also, very important, empathic responses, non-verbal communication, all these are very important, guided questions. And so, before you even come in, you knock the door. When you knock the door, you come in, you greet your patient, and you introduce yourself. If you are a clinician, the medical doctor, you tell them who you are. Like you see, I specifically mentioned who I was. Then, if you're a medical student, you measure your name, your class, and your school. Then the next thing is you specifically explain to the patient the role, what you're about to do. So, watch me as we go. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Olu Abusala Oshimusu, but you can call me Dr. B. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm good. Thank you very much. So we're going to be starting with the first category, which is identifying data. Now, when it comes to identifying data, there's a mnemonic for that, which is name guard. N, which is for name. A, which is for age. M, which is for marital status. E, for educational status. Now, G, which is gender. H, which is for housing or address. O, which is for occupation. How, which is for religious status or your belief system. Then D, which is for date of birth. So watch me as I ask my patient these questions. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Yeah, please do have your consent to ask these questions. Yes. Okay, what's your name, please? Francis Franklin. Thank you. Francis Franklin, please, how would you like me to address you? Frank. Frank, okay. So Frank, how old are you? I'm 28. Okay, what's your marriage status? Are you single or married? Single. Okay. What's your highest level of education? Bachelor's degree. Okay. And um, what gene that you identify with? A male. Okay. Um, where do you stay? Like your address, um, what setting is your house in nature? Right? I stay at Canyon County, just beside the beach. Okay, thank you. Uh, also, what do you do for a living? I work in a restaurant as a waiter. Okay. Um, what's your belief system like? What religion? I'm a Christian. Okay. And what's your date of birth? Uh, August 9, 1999. Okay, thank you. And with that, we are done with the first category. Now, we'll be going to our second category. And this type of category is history of presenting illness. Now, this is where you're going to get the information based on what brought your patient to you that day. So, the first thing you'll be asking is the chief complaint. Your patient is going to have a lot of symptoms going on there. But you know, that chief word is the one that most commonly affects the patient. So, I'll ask my patient, what brought you in today to see me? Um, I have a chest pain. Okay, thank you. And from there, we move on to mnemonic on the history of presenting illness. And so my mnemonic for that is Lord Alpha Cast. Lord L-O-R-D Alpha. A F A, then cast C A S T. Now let's start with the learn. L for location, O for onset, R for radiation, D for duration. Then move on to the alpha. The A for alleviating factors, F for frequency, the A for aggravating factors. Then move on to the cast, C for character. A for associated symptoms, S for skill, and T for treatment. So work with me as we ask my patient the questions. Okay, so you say you came in with a chest pain. Correct. Now, please, do you show me the location of this chest pain? Um, the left side. 
Okay, okay, thank you. When did this stress pain start? Um, it started last night. Okay, does this pain move anywhere else? No. Radiation. Now, for how long will you describe this pain lasting? Just for a couple of minutes. Duration. Now, is there anything you do that makes this pain better? Um, when I lay down. And that's your elevating factor. Now, does this pain come and go or it's a constant pain? It comes and go. That's frequency. Now, is there anything you do that makes this pain worse? Uh, when I exercise. And that's your aggravating factors. Now, how will you describe this pain in words? Um, like a pressing pain. Okay, that's character. Then, are there any symptoms you notice aside this chest pain? Um, I feel like I have a shortness of breath. You know, the moment the pain comes in, I won't be able to breathe very well. And also, um, like I can't just perform any other activity. I just feel numb. Okay, and that's associated symptoms. Then on a scale of 1 to 10, how will you rate this pain? 1 being the minimum and 10 being the maximum. I would say 7. Okay, and that scale. Lastly, have you used any medication for this pain? No, I have not. And that's treatment. With that, we are done with our second category. Now, note, based on this category of history of present illness, don't forget that this is just a foundation. Depending on whatever my patient chief complaint is, there will be more questions which could be asked. And that will be done subsequently in other episodes, whereby we do history taking based on a specific system. Now, let's go to our third category. And our third category is history of past illness. Now, also I have an amazing mnemonic that will help you out there. Now, let's look at this together. So it's P cast. P C A S T. Now, big B I G. D T. D T. And card. That is C A D. Now let's start with the P cast. P for past medical history. Now under this, you're gonna ask both family history and also drug history, specific for that past medical history. Then we have the childhood history, which is C. And we have the history of any form of allergy reaction, which is A. Then we have surgical history, which is S. Then we have transfusion history. Then the B-I-G, we have B as both male and female questions. There we walk through the sexual history. Then we have the high, where we ask questions based on immunization. Now, when asking questions on immunization, we also ask questions on vaccination and tribal history. Then we go to G, which is your gynecological history. Now, this question is asked only for females. And I'll explain to you the kind of questions you also ask in these states. Especially because my patient here is male. Now, then we have DT. D for diet or exercise, diet and exercise, then T for trauma. Now, then we also have CAD. CAD is coffee, alcohol, and drug history. The drug here is recreational drugs. Now let's do this together. Okay. Now the first question you are asking your patient is going to be the past medical history. Please, do you have any history of chronic illness as an adult? Better you've been admitted for, like diabetes, like hypertension, arthritis, stroke? No. Okay. Now, if you have said here, so you had one, immediately you want to ask the medication he has been using for that. But in a situation where he doesn't have one, you see, ask them. Are you using any medication for any form of condition? No. There you have your drug history. Now, because he said he had no form of history of chronic illness, you see, ask about the family history. Do you have any form of chronic illness in the family, be it your dad, your mom, or any of your siblings? No. Then we move on to childhood history. Now, ask the question, um, do you have any issue of any chronic illness as a child? No. Okay, what about any history of allergies? No. 
You're not allergic to any form of food, any form of condition, any form of drugs? No. Okay, do you have any surgery in the past? No surgery. Okay, what about any form of transfusion? No transfusion. Okay, so we're done with PCAST. We're going to be going to BIG. Now, B is both male and female questions, which is basically sexual history. Now, before you ask that question, you have to make sure to reassure your patient that it's going to be strictly what? Confidential. Okay, so these questions I'm going to be asking you now, um, I promise you it's going to be strictly confidential. Um, are you sexually active? No. Okay, now, if my patient said yes, that he was sexually active, there are more questions I need to ask, like, first of all, how many partners? and what form of contraceptive does he use and I'll ask more questions like have you noticed any form of urinary frequency, urinary urgency or dysuria which is what pain while urinating. Now we go to I which is immunization and I told you it comes with what vaccination and travel history. So these are going to ask the question are your immunization and vaccination record up to date? Yes. Okay did you travel recently? No. Okay, then we move on to the last one, which is the gynecological history based on the BIG. Now, because my patient is male, I'm not going to be asking these questions, but these are the questions you ask. Number one, when was your last period? Now, is it regular or irregular? The number of pads or tampons you use per day. These are all important questions. Then we go to the next question, which is diet and exercise. Um, are you vegetarian or non-vegetarian? Non-vegetarian. Okay, how often do you exercise? Once in a while. Okay, do you have an history of physical or mental trauma? No. Alright, then we go to the last thing which is your social history. Now, I'll ask the name. C, um, do you drink coffee? No, no coffee. Okay, what about alcohol? Uh, occasional. Okay, now, will you classify yourself like someone drinks it on a regular? No. Okay, now, based on your patient's alcohol intake, there's an important question you need to ask, which is cage questions. Now, C is, do you ever feel the need to cut down? A, do you feel angry when you are told or discussed about your alcohol intake? G, do you ever feel guilty about your alcohol intake? And E, do you use it as an eye opener? whenever you wake up in the morning. The last question which is on D, recreational drugs. Now, do you use any form of recreational drugs like marijuana, cocaine, um, PCP, LSD? No. Okay, and with that we are done with category 3 which is history of past illness. Now we are going to category 4. Now, on category 4, there are three important things you need to do, which is one, review of systems, summary, and then your closure. So watch me as I do that. Now, in order not to stress my patient here, I'm going to just be giving you some ideas of things to ask on that review of systems. So basically, you're asking some yes or no questions, going through the systems from the head to toe. So you start with from general questions. So what general questions you ask? Have you noticed any form of weight changes of recent? Have you noticed fatigue? Have you noticed any form of weakness in your body? Then we go to skin. That way you ask questions like, do you notice any form of rashes, sores, dry skin? Then when it comes to H-E-E-N-T, that is your ear, eyes, ear, nose and throat questions. On air you ask questions like, have you noticed any form of headache? Do you notice any form of dizziness or lightheadedness? For eyes you have to you notice any form of blurry vision, redness, pain in the eyes. Then for ear you ask questions that you notice any form of discharge. You notice any form of headache. So your ear ache. Then do you notice any form of vertigo? Now you then go to nose. You've noticed any form of nose stuffiness whereby discharge from the nose. Now you also ask about throat. Any form of sore throat, any form of harshness of voice, all these are important questions. Now you go to the next stage, which will be the breast. Before we even go to the breast, look at the neck. You ask questions about do you notice any form of swollen glands? 
Do you notice any form of stiffness of neck or pain in the neck? Do the breast you ask questions like, do you notice any form of lump? Do you notice any form of pain discharged from the nipple? Then you go to respiratory. You ask about cough. Have you noticed any form of coughing? Now, when you ask about coughing, you need to ask also about sputum. There's a form of production. Now, sputum, whenever you ask any question about production, think of your ABCOs. A, B, C, O's. A, for amount of sputum. B, if there is any form of blood in the sputum. C, the color and the consistency. O, for odor, the smell of the sputum. So that's your ABCOs. Now, then you also ask questions like, this being any form of shortness of breath, an emotesis, that is what coughing out blood. Let's go to cardiovascular system. For cardiovascular system, you ask, do you notice any form of chest pain or topnia, paroxysmal, nocturnal dyspnea? These are important questions. Shortness of breath. Then you also go to your GIT. Your GIT system, you ask questions about constipation, diarrhea, difficulty swallowing, hemorrhoids, and the likes. Now, let's go to your urinary. Your urinary, which is, which is your GUT system, your genital urinary tract, you're asking questions about urinary frequency, urinary urgency. You're asking questions about dysuria. You're asking questions about polyuria, excessive urination. You're asking questions along this line, not the reproductive system. When it comes to male, you ask questions about sores on their penis or discharge in their penis, or if they have any form of scrotal pain. What about the female, you ask questions about dyspnea, which is what pain while having sexual intercourse. Then you ask questions also about vaginal discharge. Your ABCOs will come again. Amount, A, B, blood, C, the color and consistency, and O, all those smell without you doing. Then we go to peripheral vascular, basically asking for leg pains, leg cramps, swelling in your calves, on your legs, or foot. All important questions. Hematological system. You ask questions about if there is any form of easily bruising or bleeding. Signs of anemia, do you get like fatigue, dizziness? Then you ask endocrine questions like what? Cold or heat intolerance, polyuria, excessive taste, and the likes. Then, these are all questions you can go from air to two when it comes to different systems. But there is one important one that is not system much associated with, which is psychiatry. Then you ask questions based on mood. Now, this will be only be relevant based on the chief complaint. So based on either depression or any form of anxiety disorders and the likes. Okay, now while you ask all those questions, it's just to confirm in case you might have missed something important or the patient might have forgotten something important. But the moment you start asking this question based on each system, the patient will remember. Now, to summarize, you pick some important things your patient told you from the history of present illness just to jog your patient's memory in case your patient has forgotten something or made a mistake with some information with you like for example oh you said you had chest pain you said it doesn't radiate anywhere oh you said it's on a scale of seven over ten you said you don't use any form of treatment for it these are all our summarization and at the end of the day you close this way this is your closure Thank you for the information. Now, um, if you are a student, you say, I'm going to refer this information to my attending. And in case of any other further investigative diagnosis, we will get back to you, me and my attending. But in case you are a doctor, you say, thank you for this information. And I'm going to be looking at the need for other investigative diagnosis. In case of further investigative diagnosis, I'll get back to you. Thank you. And with that, that's the end of our video today. Thank you for joining this community. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share. We need to create more awareness. Thank you. Bye.